A geometric series is a series in which consecutive terms bear the same ratio to each other. I've written out a simple example of such a series here. The first term is 1, and the series consists of powers of x. In each case, the ratio from one term to the next is just x. We could write this as a sum of powers, or we could use the summation notation with x to the power of the label. I ask you to think for a moment what might happen for various values of x. Suppose we take x's for which the absolute value is bigger than 1. In that case, the powers get bigger and bigger, and so the sum increases indefinitely. It does not come to any value, and so it is divergent. Even if x is equal to 1, we would be adding up an infinite number of 1's, so again the series would be divergent. If x is negative 1, then the series will alternate between values of 1 and 0. Again, it is divergent. So we can make this inequality non-strict. The series diverges for all x with magnitude greater than or equal to 1. Where things get interesting is when the magnitude of x is less than 1. Now the powers are getting smaller and smaller as we pass along the series. That means that this series might have a chance of converging. In the coming pages I'm going to show you that in fact for these values of x the series does converge and we will find a particular function to which it converges. I'd now like to remind you about partial sums. A partial sum is what you get when you add up the first few terms of the series. The first partial sum for this series is just the first term. The second partial sum is the sum of the first two terms. The third partial sum is the sum of the first three terms. We could write down a formula for the nth partial sum, but notice that the powers of x stop one short of n each time, because we've started with 1. So we would have 1 plus x plus x squared, and so on, as far as x to the power n minus 1. The question as to whether the series converges boils down to the question as to whether the partial sums converge to a limit. If the limit as n goes to infinity of Sn is L, then G converges and has value L. We would say the sum from i equals 0 to infinity of x to the i is L. It's now my intention to find out what the particular limit L is for this series. I want to play a little trick with the partial sums. I want to look at the quantity 1 minus x multiplied by the nth partial sum. We could write that out in more detail. Putting in the partial sum, to x to the n minus 2 and eventually x to the n minus 1. I want to multiply out the brackets, expanding, but in a very special way. I'm first of all going to list all the terms you get when you multiply through by the 1. That will give us 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed and so on plus x to the n minus 2 plus x to the n minus 1. Now I'm going to put in the rest of the terms that I get from multiplying by negative x, but I'm going to line them up in columns. Negative x times 1 is negative x. Negative x times x is negative x squared, and so on. Can you see by lining things up this way, that almost everything will cancel. In fact, we'll just be left with the end terms. The 1, and then everything cancels until the last term, minus x to the n. We could now make Sn the subject of this equation. 
and we will then be able to investigate its limit. Sn is 1 minus x to the n over 1 minus x. Now remember that we are only interested in the case where the absolute value of x is less than 1. Let's look at what happens in this case. If the absolute value of x is less than 1, we can say that x to the n tends to 0 as n approaches infinity. So the limit as n goes to infinity of Sn is the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 minus x to the n over 1 minus x. But x to the n is tending to 0, so we're just left with 1 over 1 minus x. So long as x satisfies the condition that its magnitude is less than 1, the series G converges. G of x equals 1 over 1 minus x for absolute value x less than 1. We found the sum of the geometric series. Let's look at a couple of particular cases. Already in a previous screencast, we looked at the sum from 0 to infinity of 1 half to the power i. This is really just our series g with x substituted by a half. We can now say what the sum of the series is. I told you what it was in the previous screencast, but we can now prove it. It's 1 over 1 minus a half, which is 1 divided by a half, which is 2. Similar sort of argument would work for other values. i equals 0 to infinity. If we take powers of a third, this would sum to 1 over 1 minus a third. That's 1 divided by 2 thirds, which is 3 halves. There's a lot more we need to say about geometric series, but I think that's enough for one screencast. We will pursue the subject further in, in later editions.